Hello, my faithful moonbeams. Today I will be doing Kiki's delivery service. As I mentioned in a previous video, rest in peace, Phil Hartman. As this was his last film, he was the voice of the. He was also the voice of the air conditioner in the Brave Little Toaster. Which Channel Awesome forgot to mention. <sighs> However, this is about Kiki's delivery service and not uh, the Brave Little Toaster, so. With uh, Kiki's delivery service, it's about a young girl who runs away from home because she's a witch in training. Anyways, uh, it opens up with Kiki um, uh, on a hillside listening to the radio as a bee flies over her head. And she hears about the Spirit of Freedom, a dirigible. <clears throat> and then uh, she hears that it's going to be a full moon. And anyone who's got plans, it better get them in order. And when she hears that, she runs home. And uh, tells her cat. And then ruins her mom's potion. Because her mom is also a witch. Uh, which is where she gets her magical powers from. She's sort of like uh, Tabitha with Stevens, uh, Seamus Finnegan, half and half. Her, her mom's a witch, her dad's a muggle. Or the Japanese version thereof. Anyways, uh, With, uh, anyway, so she tell she ruins her mom's version, and there's this woman named Miss Dora who's getting her rheumatism me medicine from her mom. And unlike Granny, um, uh, Granny Clambit, uh, the rheumatism medicine actually cures rheumatism versus being moonshine or at least helps with rheumatism anyways Kiki flies away and I love both the sub and dub version of Kiki's delivery service they both have different uh, opening themes And, um, so after she tells her dad that she's going to fly away home, she's going to fly away from home, uh, he calls his mom, and she comes, and, and he's like, yeah, she's leaving at midnight, so. And, so she bang, so the trees have bells in them, and so she runs her tree, and so she... She makes a new broom. She makes her broom, and her mom gives her her broom instead because she doesn't like Kiki's broom, because apparently Kiki's broom was too small or something. And Gigi was like, "Your broom is nice, but let's take your mom's." And she's like, "Well, you're no help." And so Miss Dora's like, "Well, you can make a new broom when you get to where you're going." Anyway, so. She flies away at midnight, and she bangs into the bells. The theme song plays, and then after the theme song and the opening credits, she sees a different witch, and um, she's a fortune teller, and she tells Kiki because she's a fortune teller, she can chill. She can eat, she's pretty much easy at anything, and she shows Kiki where her home is, where her city is, and she's like, well, it's so big, and she's like, yeah, well, to you it would be, so she's like a snob, and it's not that good, and 
And G Gigi's like, well, what a snob. And did you see her cat? And gives them a raspberry. Blows a raspberry at them. Uh, he does that a couple times in the movie. If he doesn't like anyone, he blows a raspberry at them. So. Uh, and then... Uh, And then after she runs into the witch, she uh, there's a big storm, and she crash lands into a train, and she falls asleep in the hay. And then the and then the one train passes the train that she's in, and then the train starts up, and they and so Gigi and Kiki are in the train, and they. Ride the train to where it's going, and then uh, the morning comes, and the cows are eating the hay because there are cows underneath her, and they're eating the hay. And um, she's like, "I think I hear cows," and Gigi's like, "I think I smell cows," and so. And she's like, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to fall asleep in your breakfast. And so her and Gigi uh, uh, see a new city. And uh, she's like, oh, Gigi, look at the, look at this, look at the sea. And he's like, oh, big deal. So just, just a big puddle of water me. And so she uh, gets... Um, she gets on her broom and she's like, "Are you ready? Let's go!" And they take off. And then, um, and they're like, "Oh, well, there's this new city." And he's like, "Well, there might be a witch here." And she's like, "Well, there might not be." And so, so she gets a technically a bird's eye view of the city or witch's eye view from her perspective and um, she meets the clock so she goes to the clock tower and there's a guy at the clock tower he's like well bless my hourglass it's a real life witch and, uh, and she's like are there any other witches here and he's like well no one's seen a witch here in years and so she's like well that, that's it we're staying and she's so she um so she's flying, she comes flying down, and everyone sees her on her broom, and uh, and Gigi's like, everyone's staring at us, and she's like, yes, smile, so make your impression, and uh, and she fly, there's a tunnel for pedestrians and a tunnel for cars, and she goes down the one for cars, and almost crashes into the cars and uh, runs into a and so the cop is sees her almost cause an accident and he's like hey you almost caused an accident uh, give me your name and because um, I'm going to report you and so and she's like well are you going to tell my parents and like of course I'm going to tell your parents I have to you're, you're a minor, because she's a minor, he has to tell her parents, and so, but her parents don't live in town, and he's like, give me your name and address, and so, anyways, uh, Tombo, uh, he, he, she hears a voice, and a voice yelling for the cop, and the cop is like, uh, uh, tells her to stay, and she runs off, and Gigi's like, well, he told us to stay, and she's like, yeah, well, I'm running. So, anyways, Tombo, a boy, is all like, well, you're safe now, and you got that cop off your case, so. Then she's not hungry, even, even though she has some food, she's not hungry. Uh,. And then, uh, 
tries to get a place to sleep and it's a, and it's a hotel but the manager of the hotel asks for her ID and she's like never mind and then and then she comes and there's a bakery that she goes to and she's up up at the top of the street in the bakery there's a bakery in the a lady leaves the bakery and the owner of the bakery comes out and she's hollering at the lady for the pacifier and Kiki tells her that she'll deliver the pacifier to the lady. And uh, she gets on her broom and uh, jumps off the jumps off and uh, for a second the woman is all like she thinks that the girl's gonna commit suicide because she just jumped off the cliff, jumped off the thing, and she's like, oh, okay, she's flying. And, uh, so, anyways, uh, Kiki delivers the broom to the lady, and the baby starts crying, and so she gives the pacifier to the baby. And she returns to the bakery as people are buying their goods and the woman tells her to come in and so Kiki delivers the gives the woman who wanted the, who had the pacifier the um I know and she's like can you deliver girls fine is uh, wonderful and everything. And then uh, they introduce themselves, and the woman's name is Asano. Uh, voiced by Tress McNeil. As everyone would remember, and if anyone remembers, Anything of Tiny Teen Adventures, Chess McNeil is the voice of Babs Bunny. She's also the voice of Dot Warner from Animaniacs. Yeah. One of my favorite voice actresses. Kirsten Dunst voices Kiki. Anyways, so Kiki gets a place to stay at Osano's. Uh, Osano gets, says, if you, uh, she's like, well, why didn't you tell me you didn't have a place to stay? Uh, we have a spare room, and you can have the spare room uh, upstairs. And so she's like, so anyway, so she gets a place to stay, and Asana tells her that uh, the bathroom is downstairs, and apparently it's during the time when flashlights are around. Is he? Because first time Kiki uses the bathroom, you hear the toilet flush. Yeah. And then, uh, then Kiki goes shopping, and uh, her after she goes shopping, her she gets her first job. Delivering something, uh, which is because she decides she's the only the only thing she's good at is flying. So she's going to start delivery service, and her first delivery is a cage with a stuffed doll that looks like her cat. And so. She puts the cage on the end of her broomstick and she flies away and then uh, she runs into wild geese and they 
but he tells them that they're going to play higher because the gust of wind is coming along, and because Gigi's a cat, he can understand what the geese are saying, and he can understand animals, and she can understand him due to the fact that she's a witch. And so, uh, the geese fly higher, and uh, she loses the, she crashes in a tree of crow thinks that she's going to steal its eggs, and and then she goes back, but. Uh, that Gigi's like, they're calling you an egg thief and you don't want to know what else. And so, because they lost the doll, they, she, um, she puts Gigi in the cage to pretend he's the doll. And until she can find the real one. And then, uh, she goes... And so she delivers the cage with Gigi inside, and uh, and so she runs into Ursula, voiced by Jenny Garofalo, uh, who's an artist, and uh, so she cleans Ursula's house while Ursula fixes. Uh, the doll because the head was falling off due to the fact that uh, the crows were making a fuss over it and so Ursula fixes the doll while Kiki cleans the house. And, uh, and so Kiki uh, goes to Fetch Gigi and um, the dog Jeff makes friends with Gigi and um, so Jeff helps Gigi get out of the house and Kiki gives Jeff the doll and the doll is taken back inside. And apparently, when uh, Jeff goes. Jeff leaves the house. He's told to close the door when he comes back, and apparently he can do that. Apparently he apparently he understands, and he closes the door when he comes back in. So. And then um, she makes a few other deliveries. Uh, makes friends with Tombo and his friends, and. Uh, and so Tombo almost dies and uh and so Ursula comes back and after Kiki loses her powers 